But yeah, you 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 deal with these people, and you'll see same way with our people. We was in the land, and we put ourselves in a position where we would serve all these other gods. To remember, at this time, our thinking was a little different. Right now, if I ask anybody, you know, I'm saying how many gods is it? We'll say one, right? One true God, Most High God. His name is Yah, right? But our thinking was different. We didn't have a thinking that there's only one God. We had a thinking as there's one supreme God. Like, it ain't no other, none of these other gods. There's a whole bunch of gods. None of these gods is messing with our God. Like, you got the Sumerian God. You got the Egyptian gods. You got, you got the, uh, Babylonian you got the Babylonian God. gods. You got all these different gods. But y'all serve these gods, and they powerless against my gods. Right? And so when we started to serve them, we, when we mixed with these other nations, and we let these, the Canaanites and everything could stay around, we started to do what the Canaanites did. And they had their own Canaanite gods. So we was like, okay, you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like superstition. You know what I'm saying? You got some more. What's a good superstition? What's a positive one though? Mm -hmm. Knock on wood, right? Kind of like knock on wood. Imagine having, you know what I'm saying, like some people around you, and every time, like every time something like, you know what I'm saying, happened, they're like, no, knock on wood, that don't happen to me. And you start to look at it and be like, it, nothing's happening to them. Like that stuff don't be happening to them, and I think it's because they're knocking on wood. So guess what you start to do? You start to adapt that process. You know what I'm saying? So you start to knock on wood too. It's the same way with God. Back then, the way that they would associate luck is, well, okay, my crops came in on time this month. And guess what I'm serving? I'm serving the crop God, the Canaanite crop God. He controls all the crops. So you see that this man pray, and at first you laugh at him. Like, man, that ain't no real God, man. Most High God, that's the, that, you know what I'm saying? That, he, he powerless. He has shut that down. Then you see the Most High God made your crop not come in. And then his crop came in and he served this guy that you thought was like a puny guy. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, I need my crop. So you start serving this guy too and serving your guy, right? You start doing both. And so the most high guy is like, nah, this, this thing is starting to move me to jealousy. I don't even want to be around here no more. Y'all y'all not pure. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just do whatever y'all want to do, right? You start trying to live, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Live on both sides of the darn fence. That thing don't work, right? So he is looking like, okay. I'm getting out of here, most high God. He's like, I'm getting out of here. I don't want to deal with it, right? There's always been gods, right? Things are, things are, it's a show right now called American Gods. Is that what it's called? American Gods? Yeah, it's a show called American Gods. And I like it. Very vulgar show. But I like it because it kind of shows how, like, how the, the ancient idea of gods is kind of replaced by a lot of the modern day things. So, you know what I'm saying? And so that's what the whole premise of the show is. It's like you have the old guys that are kind of getting put away by new guys. And the new guys are like technology and social media and, and all these different things, right? It's a whole bit TV and I don't know, all types of stuff. They have a whole bunch of them. But they're getting, they're getting replaced by these new guys, apparently. And so you can kind of see like in the show how they kind of battle and, every, and you know what I'm saying, try to, try to come to terms and, and all that. And that's what the show is about. And it's, you know what I'm saying, it's an interesting show. But it, it, that's what it is. Like today, you don't have a bunch of people saying, oh, there's a bunch of gods. There's still some people that say it. But for the most part, we refer to other things that are technically not gods, and we don't view them as gods, but we worship them in the same way. Like we said, we devote the same type of amount of time and the same amount of attention. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? The same amount of time, the same amount of attention as you would have to a god back in the ancient days now goes to these other things. And these other things cause you, and, and you devote yourself to it, and cause you to sin. And so, in the same way, we look at it and rewind, we can look in our book and we can see how God looks at those things. By looking at how God looks at gods, other gods. Right? You have to keep in mind, remember, they, we thought gods were real. And the Most High God never came to us and told us, oh, those gods aren't real. As a matter of fact... Grab a. Uh, you know, there was like demons. Sacrifice to demons or something like that. Yeah, I can't remember where it is. I want to say Corinthians. Maybe seven. I don't know. I can't think of where it is. Instead, let's grab Exodus. We just hear it out of the Most High God mouth himself. It's Exodus. Uh, not the only LT. What, I want three? Let's try Exodus 3 2. What the burden is? Yeah. Yeah, 
It's Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Uh -huh. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. Okay. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called on him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not near here. Put off your shoes from off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Mm -hmm. And moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Mm -hmm. For I know their sorrows, and am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. To bring them up out of the land out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Okay. Unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Okay, that's what I want. Give me Exodus chapter four, verse one. And I'm probably going to verse one, but go ahead. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor listen unto my voice. But they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto you. What's the last verse? Uh, what number is it? 31. Give me 24. And it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. All right, give me just before that. So what I want, uh, maybe like 20? All right. And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon a donkey, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand, and the Lord said unto Moses, When you go to return into Egypt, See that you do these wonder, wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in your hand. But I will harden his heart, and he shall not let the people go. And you shall say unto Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if you refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay your son, even your firstborn. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, by the way, in the end, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Now, go to, uh, go to chapter 8. Pharaoh and saying to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. He said, Let my people go that they may serve me. And if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy waters with frogs. Uh huh. He said, I'll smite them with what? Frogs. Okay, so he said, I'll, I'll smite all the waters with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into your house, and into your bedchamber, and upon your bed, and into the house of your servants, and upon your people, and into your ovens, and into your needing troughs. So people who study Egypt, you know what they say about frogs? That this was an, I mean, this was a, uh, the frogs was a, 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 a ancient, a ancient animal for them that, that was sacred. Like, you, you don't mess with, you don't kill no frog, you don't mess with no frog. So the Most High God put frogs all over their land. So if you got a, a rule in your city and in your land, you don't kill the frogs, the frogs are special, they sacred, and you covered in them, now it challenges your thinking. Now these things become a pest. What's sacred to you becomes a pest, right? So we see the plagues, even the blood, right? The blood that came out of the water. They worshiped the water, right? They had a god of the water. So the, when it came blood, basically that's God challenging the idea of their god. Like, okay, so you got your god. I made the, I made it blood. What's your god gonna do now, right? He had, uh, he had, he put, uh, what else was it? Snakes, same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like they worship snakes. Like you had, you had even on the Pharaoh's hat, it was a snake. It was like a cobra. You know what I'm saying? A little thing. You ever seen a little picture of the Pharaoh's little, little, little cap or whatever? You know what I'm saying? That thing's like a cobra. They worship snakes. So that's why you see Aaron, he put the rod down and Moses told him, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, put it down and that thing gonna turn into a snake. Right? Then he pick it up and it turned back into a rod. Because the Most High God is looking like, okay, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's your God. Make him do something then. Show me what it is. Right? So the, the magicians, grab, grab, uh, 
grab chapter 7, verse, uh, verse like 20. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up, up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, and in the water, all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. Mm -hmm. And the fish that were in the river died, and the river stunk. And the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the magicians of Remember, Egypt, they worshipped that water. The Nile River, that was there. You know what I'm saying? All that was like related to a god for them. So when that stuff happened, it makes them feel like they got is weak. Because remember, you got Moses. You got, this is not this is not just like Moses going out doing something. This, this is very specific. The Most High God said, go to him and tell him, Yahuwah said, let his people go. It wasn't like Moses going to him like, yo, you should let my people go. I really I really think it's a good idea that you do that. He told him specifically, Yahuwah, I'm coming for Yahuwah. He said, let his people go. He's the Most High God. Right? If we go back and read it, Pharaoh was like, who is, who is Yah that I should listen to him? Grab, where is that at? That's probably verse 1. Give me verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be your prophet. Uh -huh. You shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. Mm -hmm. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. But Pharaoh shall not listen to you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth my armies and my people the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. Mm -hmm. The Egyptians shall know that I am Yahuwah, which when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt. Egyptians shall know what? That I am Yahuwah, when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. Right? So the whole point of this, it wasn't that really letting the people go. That that was That's easy money for God. He told them, he told them, you're going to put these signs on them, but don't worry about it. I'm going to harden his heart so that he don't let y'all go. If he just let Moses, I mean, let uh, Pharaoh do what he do, Pharaoh would have let him go earlier. But the Most High God had to harden his heart. I'm like, no, 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 I got more I want to show everybody. You know what I'm saying? You can't let you go off the third plague. You give up at the third plague? No, I want him to see everything. So he put it out there so he can make a showcase so that everybody would know, oh, that's Yahuwah. So for, for God, it was about fame. It was about, look, I need to get my name out here. I need y'all to know this is what it, this, I'm the one who it is. All these other guys y'all worshiping, it ain't nothing. So that was our idea. The Most High God never told us those gods are fake. He just, he just showed us that those gods wasn't as powerful as him. All right? Let's go back. Go back to, uh, where were we at? 720? 723? Ezekiel? Nah. Uh, uh, oh. Exodus. Can you get my phone? And the magicians oh, of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord has said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. And the Egyptians digged around, dig round about the river for water to drink, but they could not drink of the water of the river. Uh -huh. And the seven days were fulfilled after that the Lord had smitten the river. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. And mm -hmm. if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite your borders with frogs. Mm -hmm. The river shall go forth, frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into your house, and into your bedchamber, and upon your bed, and upon, into the house of your servants, and upon your people, and into your ovens, and into your kneading troughs. Mm -hmm. And the frogs shall come up both on you, and upon your people, and upon your servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, stretch forth your hand with your rod over the streams, over the rivers, uh -huh. and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up from the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters in e of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. The magicians did what? Did so with their enchantments. So you notice all the way through the first three plagues, the magicians were able to copy it. All right? We ain't got to read it, but if we go to the next play, it's going to say, a magician could do that thing. All right? So you had gods in the, back in the day, and you had magicians back in the day. Today, what do we have? Huh? Well, I'm telling you, we still got witchcraft, too. But what, what, what replaces the, the magicians now are scientists. Yeah. Right? Because in the same way, if I come to a person, right, today, so... There's a miracle that just happens. He says, water turns to blood. 
magician comes by and says, guess what? I can do that too. And he turns water into blood. And the reason that he did that is to what? To say, hey, this is a miracle or to disprove it's a miracle? No, to disprove it's a miracle, right? Because if, if Moses is coming saying, Yahuwah did that, and then the magician say, no, 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 we can do this too. It shows that, oh, that's just oh, a trick. Yeah, yeah. Right? Just a trick. You know what I'm saying? Anybody could have did that. You know what I'm saying? They just need to know. They're just trying to play a trick on us. And then that makes the, the Pharaoh say, oh, in that case, I'm hard in my heart. Right? So now today, let's think about that same scenario. If I say, you know what? It's a miracle because I can walk on water. And I go and I try to walk on water. The first thing that a scientist is going to do is look at how that happened and try to reproduce how that happened. That's what scientists do. They try to reproduce the results. And if they can reproduce it, what do they say? Oh, yep, that was a miracle? No. No. They say they can reduce it. These are the conditions in which this could happen. Therefore, this is not a miracle. Right? We can explain it. As long as you can explain it, it's not a miracle. So their idea now is, you don't need God. That's what they say. They say, no, everything happened through evolution. Once you understand the science, you don't need God. So that's just like the magicians back in the day. And in the same way, we have gods that are not gods now. We don't see them as gods, and they're really not gods. But the same devotion and attitude that we would place towards these things is the same that we would have placed towards another god. So the Most High God is looking the same way he looked back in the day. He's looking today. He's looking like, uh, when does time get devoted to me? You moving me to jealousy. Right? Well, I ain't got nothing to do. And that's one of the reasons why our people are still right where we are. Right? Because we haven't been in a position where we've devoted everything that we have to the Most High God. Right? Right now we're in a position where it's like we're still learning. The mass majority of our people don't know what they are talking about. And then we all like, you know what I'm saying, just kind of back and forth, bouncing around. You know what I'm saying? Where, whereas the Most High God is looking for dedication. He's looking for, okay, you put it out there, stick with it, let's go. Don't turn. Okay, you turn, you fall, get up, clean up, quit too. Don't wait a long time, quit, go, move, keep moving. All right? I like where you started. That was good. Ezekiel. You know what I'm saying? What was that? Ezekiel 8? Yeah. 1? All right, let's grab, let's, uh, what were we talking about last week? Or the week before last? Towards the end, David's reign. Ah, that's right. We're supposed to be talking about Solomon now. Give me First Kings chapter two. First Kings chapter two, verse one. Now the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon, Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be he said, I go the way what? Of all the earth. What, the book tell, what does the book tell us about death? Every man has to die. Where did it tell us that? Uh, it was at, uh, Paul said, every man has to die. Then the was that Hebrews? Uh -huh. Hebrews, right? The writer of Hebrews, he, tell us, he, said, he said, it's appointed on the man once to what? To die. And then after that? So now David already knew that. David looking like, I go the same way that everybody got to go. Ain't nobody getting out of this. He said, everybody got to go the same way, right? And I go that way, right? Let's see what it say. Keep going. I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and show yourself a man. He said, be, he said, be strong, therefore. Get what he said. Show yourself a man. Who he talking to? What's up? Ain't playing that stuff. He said, you got to show yourself as a man. It ain't good enough to just be a man. You got to make sure that you what you represent is a man. Right? He said, be strong. Show yourself a man. Right? Keep going. Let me see what we got. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments. Okay. And his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, uh -huh. that you may prosper in all that you do. As it's written in where? The law of Moses. And the law of Moses. That you may what? Prosper in all that you do. You see these, you see these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, pastors, what they be preaching? What they call them? What they, what they say they preach? What's it called? The type of, uh, stuff to preaching that they do. What's it called? The New Testament preaching. The, uh, prosperity, uh, prosperity, gospel. prosperity, yeah, prosperity gospel. 
You know what I'm saying? They be preaching that prosperity gospel. When's the last time they told you do everything that's in the law of Moses? Why is it that everything that they talk about, you can't never find that thing in the book? I've never seen the prosperity gospel. You know what I have seen though? Do the law of Moses so you can prosper. That's book. I mean, if I, if I just wanted to sell it, just be like, I'm teaching you how to be prosperous. And I wanted to use the book to do it. That would be easy to prove. I'm sure that thing to you all the time. Guess what I'll never show you in the book? Prosperity gospel. You'll never find that in there. Keep going. Watch this. I don't know what's wrong with these people. As it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do. Mm -hmm. And wheresoever you turn yourself. Mm -hmm. That the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying... If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, mm -hmm. there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. So now David is looking like, look, I got this promise now. Don't you mess it up for me. <laughs> all right, you do what you're supposed to do. Don't you know I mess it up for me. All right, let's hear about it. Moreover, you know also what Joab, the son of Zeruiah, Zeruiah did to me. Now pay attention. And what he did to the two captains of the host of Israel, to Abner, son of Ner, and to Amasa, son of Jether. Mm -hmm. He talked. He killed these men. We didn't read it. Well, I think we read one of them. Uh, Abner, yeah, maybe. We, yeah, I think we read about Abner. But we didn't read. We didn't read about the other one, right? So he killed these men, right? So now, after he tell them, do what the Most High God told you to do in the law of Moses. Now he's coming back and he's like, and you already know what you need to do about these other guys, right? Let's hear. Let's see. Let's see, what, uh, let's see what else he said. Whom he slew and shed the blood of war in peace, uh -huh. and put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins, and in the and in his shoes that were on his feet. Mm -hmm. Do therefore according to your wisdom, and let not his let not his hoary head go down to the grave in peace. All right. When they say hoary head, that just means old, like gray hair. You know what I'm saying? Don't let it gray. Don't let that old man go down in peace. Now this is David, man. This is David. He fought with David this whole time. But David didn't have the heart to kill his man. Because I fought with him. But David the whole time knew, oh, you got to be judged, right? This got to be done. I can't do it. But somebody's going to have to do it to you. So he's telling his son, don't let him go unpunished. That's how God works. Nobody gets by. That thing might linger out for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You be thinking, okay, well, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? It's good. It ain't that bad. We all right. But nobody gets by. Eventually, you're going to have to pay for that thing. Right? Sometimes that's probably hefty too. Right? Sometimes that thing ain't a little much. But eventually you're going to have to pay for it. Alright? Keep going. But show kindness unto the sons of Barzillai the Gileadite, and let them be of those that eat at thy table. For so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom your brother. And behold, you have with thee Shimei, the Who? son of Shimei. Uh oh. The son of Gera, uh -huh. a Benjamite of Bahira, uh -huh. which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went to Mahanaim. What verse is that? Eight. Eight. He said, you remember, y'all remember Shimei? You remember when David was walking up the mountain, he was praying, he was crying because he had to go to one war with his son. And he was like, ah, and then you had somebody that was throwing rocks at him, right? But he had all his soldiers around him. So them rocks, we believe them rocks didn't even touch David, right? But he had throwing rocks and the soldier was like, I can get him right now. I'll take his head off right now. What you talking about? You want me to get it? And David was like, no, nah, I mean, if God put it on his heart to talk like that towards me, then just forget it. David's all depressed and sad about everything, right? But now you look back. David ain't forget. He said, oh, and uh, Solomon, my son, you about to become king. Don't forget. Outside of Abner, I mean, uh, Joab, who messed with Abner and uh, what was that? A Mesa. A Mesa. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget about Shimei either. Right? Remember, David was like, man, God put it on this heart, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a mess right now. God put it on this heart, then forget it. Let him go. Right? But now David, at the end of his life, like, oh, he got to get it. That thing only right, he got to get it. I was the king, and he threw a rock at me. That don't make no darn sense. Let's hear about it. But he came down to meet me at Jordan, mm -hmm. and I swear to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put thee to death with the sword. Now, therefore, hold him not guiltless. For you are a wise man, and know what you ought to do unto him. Mm -hmm. But his gray head bring thou down to the grave with blood. <laughs> he told him, you got to kill him. Right? He said, do it, just, do it how you do it now. Do it in your wisdom. But his butt got to die. Right? He kept scoring his whole time. David didn't forget none of this stuff. They looking like, man, I had a rough darn life. 
All these people got to get it. Everybody got to darn get it, right? Let's hear about that. Let's keep going. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. Uh -huh. and, the David and the days that David reigned over Israel were 40 years. 40 years? Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and 30 and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Uh huh. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. What verse is that? 12. Uh, give me, jump on down to 29. Come on down to verse 29. Let's see what he's talking about. You stop. All right, so Solomon took the throne. David died. All right, so now Solomon is the king. He gave, he gave, he gave Solomon some uh, marching orders. He's like, listen, don't you forget my enemies. All right? I can't take them out. All right? Joe, have my man. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to take them out. All right? And Shimei, I already told Shimei I wasn't going to kill him. I didn't say he wouldn't be killed, though. I just said I wasn't going to do it, right? New sheriff in town, right? This is verse 29. Second Kings, our first Kings, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 29, sorry. And it was told King Solomon that Joab was fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord. And behold, he is by the altar. Look, Joab, his old self, he is like, let me get out of Dodge, right? Joab knew. Joab wasn't a silly man, right? Joab is about the war. He's about all the foolishness. So he already know. As soon as David died, March warrant is going to be set on me. My, the warrant is going to be put out for my arrest. That's a fact. So you know what, what, he, what he tried to do? He tried to run to the temple. Let's hear about it. And it was told King Solomon that Joab was fled into the tabernacle of the Lord. And behold, mm -hmm. he is by the altar. Look, <laughs> so he tried to run to the altar. He tried to run in God's place. Then watch this. Then Solomon sent Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, saying, Go, fall upon him. So while he is in the t tabernacle, right by the altar, he said, Benaiah, go get his butt. It's an old man, too. I mean, this ain't no young man. It's an old man. He said, Go in there and kill his butt. Right? Let's see what happened. And Benaiah came to the tabernacle of the Lord and said unto him, Thus says the king, Come forth. And he said, No, but I will die here. Right? So he look he look at it, they like, you know, imagine like the police busting in, the SWAT team busting in. Everybody out, come out, come out. Right? Man in there, like, nope, I'ma die in here. Alright? Let's see what happened. And Ben and ben brought the king word again, saying, Thus said Joab, and thus he answered me. It's a standoff. You gotta imagine that there's a standoff. You know what I'm saying? In there, it's the temple, it's the most sacred place in the land. You can't just go in there and kill somebody. So they nervous. They looking like they like uh what are we gonna do? I mean, we can kill him, but he right there by the, by the, you know what I'm saying? He by the altar. You know what I'm saying? You can't get him like that. They like come out. He like, no, I'm not coming out. I'm staying right here. If you gonna kill me, kill me right here by the altar. Thinking that they ain't gonna do it. So they, you know, what I'm saying? they sitting there. You gotta imagine they're just stressing out, just trying to like, all right, what are we gonna do now? So we go back. They take the message to the king. They're like, look, you know what I'm saying? We got him. You know what I'm saying? He can't go nowhere, but he won't come out. Let's see what the king said. And the king said unto him. Do as he has said and fall upon him and bury him that you may take away the innocent blood which Joab shed from me and from the house of my father. <laughs> king said, oh, he said he want to die right there? All right, do it. All right? The king wasn't stupid. All the rest of the people, they looking like, you can't kill nobody in the tabernacle. But the king know our law, right? Give me Exodus chapter 21. This is Exodus 21 verse 14. Exodus chapter 21 verse 14. You don't know the law. Some of this stuff get real confusing. That's why these Christians be confused. But how do you, but how do you know what you believe is the right thing, though? Because, I mean, everybody believes something different. You want to know the difference between everybody and us? We actually read it. Right? We actually read it and go over it. And we actually take it for what We don't just read it and be like, oh, that's a beautiful poem. We read it and be like, what does that mean? Like, what would that look like? You know what I'm saying? Like, we actually imagine and play that thing out. Like, this is what actually, this is what would have happened. This is what it would have looked like. Right? We internalize it. We make that thing real. We put and bring it into our hearts. That's the difference. Right? That's the difference. For everybody else, that thing is just like words on the page. You know what I'm saying? You kind of skipping past all the words you don't really get to try to get something that, that's like, that touches you emotionally. Like, oh, God knew me from the womb. Right? And then we stop on that part and it's like, but now you miss all this other context. 
You missed the fact that that's talking about Jeremiah and ain't talking about your black butt at all. <laughs> right? So now everything that it's meant for, you just threw that thing away and now all everything you got is imaginary. You think God talking directly to you. You think that, you know, God has this special connection to you outside of anybody else. So guess what? He understands me. When I be messing up and all that, guess what? God knows my heart. That's where all that silly stuff come from. It's because you just created this. You created your religion. So now I start my Christian denomination called this, that, and the other. When you take it with the book, say you ain't got no, you, you don't have options. Everything else is cut off. There's no wiggle room with for me. You just, look, you just look at it and that's what it is. What it say, that's what it is. I'm going to call myself a, 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 a seven day Adventist war. Yeah, I keep the Sabbath and it's in the book. Why would I call myself that? Why I got to come up with a new name if the book is telling me I'm a disciple? The only reason I would do that is guess what? I wasn't paying attention when it said disciple. When it said disciple, I just read right over that. When the book tell me, you, if you continue in my word, even you can be my disciple. That meant nothing to me. I just went right over that. And guess what I, I clung to? When it said, in Antioch, that was the first time they had called Christians. You ain't never seen the book call you no Christian. Book been calling you a disciple from the darn beginning. Every promise that, that you can find is connected to disciples from the beginning. And you take this one empty phrase that ain't connected to nothing, that don't have no promise connected to it. Gotta be tradition. Gotta be tradition. It gotta be that somebody told you that first, you believed it when they told you, and then you went in the book looking for that confirmation. And that's our problem. We are told stuff, and we go to the book looking for confirmation of what we told. No, just read the book. And don't look for no confirmation. Look for confirmation of the book in the book. What else we got? Keep going. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from my altar that he may die. He said, if a man come presumptuously on his neighbor and, and what? And slay, slay him, him what? with guile. Slay him with guile. What is guile? Uh, evil intent. Lies. Evil intent. Right? So that's saying that, I don't know, maybe if a man killed somebody who was innocent, who came to him in peace. Then he said, take him even from where? My altar. Take him even from where? Take him from my altar that he may die. Even if the man is standing at the altar, this is the law written hundreds of years before what we're talking about. The law say, even if the man is at the altar, if he take his neighbor and, and God, oh yeah, get his butt. Don't you even wait on it. Get his butt. First chance you get. Right? Even if he at the altar. So when they told Solomon he had the altar, Solomon like, I know what y'all, you know what y'all worried about. Go get his butt. Go in there and get him. Do exactly how he told you. He told you to get. Go ahead and get him. All right? Let's jump back. What verse was up? Uh, Thirty-one. Thirty-one. This is uh First Kings chapter two, verse thirty-one. Azariah, is she sleep? And the king said unto him, Do as he has said, and fall upon him. Oh, and you tricked him, me. That you Azariah, you tricked me. Which Joab shed for me, for the house of my father. And the Lord shall return his blood upon his own head, who fell upon two men more righteous and better than him. Uh -huh. And slew them with the sword, my father David, not knowing thereof, to wit. Mm -hmm. After the son of Ner, captain of the host of Israel, and Amasa, the son of Jether, mm -hmm. captain of the host of Judah. Mm -hmm. Their blood shall therefore return upon the head of Joab, and upon the head of his seed forever. Mm -hmm. But upon David, and upon his seed, and upon his house, and upon his throne, shall there be peace forever from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, went up and fell upon him and slew him, and he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. Uh -huh. And the king put Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, in his room, over the host, and Zadok the priest did the king put in the room of Abiathar. Mm -hmm. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Watch what he did to Shimei. Build thee a house in Jerusalem and dwell there, and go not forth from there any anywhere. So he said, look Shimei, remember this is the man that was throwing rocks at David, throwing rocks at David, right? David was like, listen, use your wisdom now, but you know he gotta die. You kill him. 
No, no, no. Do it, do it your way. Use your wisdom. So this is Solomon's wisdom, right? Solomon, he goes to Shimei and look what he say to him. Read that part again. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Build you a house in Jerusalem and dwell there, and go not forth from there anywhere. So he told him, Build a house, and you live in the house. But don't you ever leave that house. He put him in jail. Right? He put him in prison. He said, You can build a house. It's going to be your house. Make it how you want it. But don't you ever leave it. You stay in there for the rest of your darn life. Right? He couldn't leave the house or he couldn't leave Jerusalem. No, he, could, he said, don't you, he said, build the house and never leave that. We'll see, watch this. <laughs> That's cold, bro. Watch this. He did it in his wisdom. Because Solomon had to look at it like, mm. you remember, Joab, he said, take him from the altar, go ahead and get him. Because what, what did Joab do? He killed Abner and a man. He killed a man, right? So now you're dealing with Shimei, who disrespected the king, right? Something worthy of death. You know what I'm saying? You can get worthy of death. But the king told him, I will not kill you. So Solomon said, okay, now I can't just jump out and kill him, man. That don't make no sense. He's a man of wisdom. I have to put him in a position to where he can kill himself. Right? So he said, lock him in the house. Okay, keep going. What up? What verse is that? 36. 36? Go ahead. For it shall be that on the day you go out and pass over the brook Kidron, you shall know for certain that you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. Your blood shall be upon your own head. Mm -hmm. And Shimei said unto the king, The saying is good, as my lord the king has said, so will thy servant do. All right, so Shimei agreed to it. So let's hear about it. And Shimei dwelt in Jerusalem many days. And it came to pass at the end of three years that two of the servants of Shimei ran away unto Achish, son of Micaiah, king of Gath. Mm -hmm. And they told Shimei, saying, Behold, your servants are in Gath. And Shimei arose and saddled his donkeys and went to Gath to a went to Gath to Achish mm -hmm. to seek his servants. And Shimei went and brought his servants from Gath. Mm -hmm. And it was told Solomon that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath mm -hmm. and was come again. Mm -hmm. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Did I not make thee swear by the Lord? And protested unto thee, saying, No, for a certain that on the day you go out and walk abroad anywhere that you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. And you said unto me, the word that I have heard is good. Mm -hmm. Why then have you not kept the oath of the Lord and the commandment that I have charged you with? Mm -hmm. and the king said, moreover to Shimei, you knew all that wickedness which your heart is privy to that you did to David my father. Therefore, the Lord shall return your wickedness upon your own head. Mm -hmm. And King Solomon shall be blessed and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. Mm -hmm. So the king commanded Benai, the son of Jehoiada, which went out and fell upon him that he died. What the kids call him nowadays? The hitter? <laughs> that was a shooter. You know what I'm saying? That was a shooter. Benny I? He was like, I oh, you messed up. Benny I, go ahead and handle that. Watch how Benny I did. So the king commanded Benny the son of Yehuyada, which went out and fell upon him that he died. And the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Right? That's what Solomon had to do to establish the kingdom. So think about it. Years and years of people disrespecting the king, the father, and then the son comes in and does what? Judgment. Judgment. That sound familiar? Right? We have we have years and years of people disrespecting the father, but when the son comes, it's gonna be judgment on everybody who disrespects the father. Right? All this that we're looking at is just playing out. It's just letting you know this is how it's going to play out. By no means. Right? That's exactly the conversation that the Most High God is having with the Son. Having with Yahweh Shua. He's telling them, listen. All these people now, they just, listen, you handle it the way you handle it. Right? You, it's in your hand. You handle it. But uh, they got to die. And when the Son come back, you know, I have a sword in the darn mouth, the book say. You know, I like that. All white garment, they're gonna start. That thing be dripped in red. That thing say like, like he took some grapes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm talking, I ain't talking about the Walmart grapes, you know what I'm saying? You know, the, with the red grapes that we bought, you know what I'm saying? It's a red grape, but you squeeze that thing on the inside, what color? Clear, yeah, it's like a clearish kind, kind of color. You know what I'm saying? You can squeeze it, it ain't gonna really stain nothing too much. You seen a real grape? Y'all ever went to like Whole Foods or something and like got like a real, like that thing looked black? 
You know what I'm saying? You squeeze it and that thing's like a dark, bloody looking red that comes out of it. Them thing just as sweet as darn can be. That's a real grape. You know what I'm saying? That's a grape. You know what I'm saying? When they say the, the vine, you know what I'm saying? The grapes of the vine, it was like a wine press. That's wine grapes. You know what I'm saying? Concord grapes. Huh? Concord grapes. Do they sell those ever anymore? Yeah, not, not. yeah you're not going to see them at Walmart. Man, That's they used to have them. I used to always buy Concord grapes. Now I can't find them. You get them things, it drip. It's like, that's what it looked like he was stripped in. That's all blood. Just all blood. You know what I'm saying? All blood. Just, you know what I'm saying? He, he, that's what the judgment's gonna look like. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Everybody think he coming back like, you know, hey, everybody, give me a big hug. Come here. You know what I'm saying? They think he gonna pop up in the darn sky. Talking about some, okay, Christians, let's go. <laughs> no, 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 everybody else wait. I'll be back again. Like, no, please. Leave you alone. They don't mind making up this stuff. This is uh, Second Chronicles. Give me uh, chapter one. This isn't him. He's killing everyone. Don't kill me. <laughs> Can't kill me. Yeah. This is 2 Chronicles chapter 1. Give me uh, verse 6. 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6. Not 1 Chronicles. Sorry. Six. And Solomon went up there to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. Watch this. That's a brother took all day. And that night God did did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, You have showed great mercy unto David my father, mm -hmm. and have made me to reign in his place. Mm -hmm. Now, O Lord God, let your promise unto David my father be established. Hey! Stop messing with it. For you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Mm -hmm. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this, your people, that is so great? And God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart. You better cut it out. And you have not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of your enemies. Neither yet have asked long life, but have asked of wisdom and knowledge for yourself. That you may judge my people over whom I made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had mm -hmm. that have been before you, neither shall there any after you have the like. All right? So he said, Listen, what do you want? Solomon asked for wisdom. He said, Well, because you asked for that wisdom, I'm going to give you that wisdom. But on top of that, I'm going to give you what you really want all the riches. Right? I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for, but you really want it. None before you or after you have it. All the riches. Biggest baller ever. It was like, uh, it was something on Facebook. It was like, you know what I'm saying? History never talk about these kings, which are the riches and riches and riches. And that's talking about like Mansa Musa mm -hmm. and all these other like African kings that were, they was balling nonetheless. You know what I mean? But I was like, nah, it was like nobody was richer than King Solomon. According to what the book say. Yeah, yeah. They King like, Solomon had it. Somebody had to bring the Bible into it. We don't even know if he really existed. Alright, y'all kill y'all time if y'all want to. You know what I'm saying? This story is the Queen of Sheba, you know what I'm saying? That's documented history. Solomon ran that whole region. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Israel, was, Israel never had that much territory. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Solomon was an empire. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that's what we had it. At don't nobody, don't nobody want to talk about none of that, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Solomon was running all of it. Solomon had Tyre. He had like that whole coast. He had it all. Everything that was known at that time. Solomon was running it. Uh, grab, uh, what, what verse is that? That was 12. 12, give me, uh, 1 Kings chapter 3. It's 1 Kings chapter 3, give me, like, verse 16. My man, King Solomon. Solomon was just as depressed as ever. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. Mm -hmm. 
And the one woman said, Oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and mm -hmm. I was delivered of a child with her in the house. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. Mm -hmm. And we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, except we two in the house. Right. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. Mm -hmm. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while your handmaid slept, mm -hmm. and laid it in her bosom, and laid her dead child at my bosom. Mm -hmm. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I built, which I did bear. Mm -hmm. And the other woman said, No, but the living is my son, and the dead is your son. Mm -hmm. And this said, No, but the dead is your son, and the living is my son. Mm -hmm. Thus they spake before the king. All right? So two women came to Solomon. And they were looking like, all right, this is what happened, Solomon. Solomon is sitting over as a judge. He had to decide the issue. So they're like, this is our issue. We both had babies. I had the baby first. Three days later, she had a baby. Now, when I was asleep, I was asleep with my baby. She was asleep with her baby. Now, she messed around and laid on her baby and killed the baby. Then she took, came my baby, grabbed my baby, and put it in her bosom, and then put my, the, her baby in my bosom. So she looking like, she wake up to a bed, but she like, this is not my baby. And now the other girl's like, you know what? This is my baby, it's not yours, right? So they blaming each other like, no, 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 no. This is not my baby, you killed my baby and took my, I mean, you took, you took my baby and you killed your baby. No, 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 that is your baby and you killed your own baby, this is my baby. So they going back and forth about it. They go to Solomon to have Solomon figure out who deserves to get the baby. So this is Solomon and wisdom at work, watch this. Then said the king, the one says, this is my son that lives, and the son, and your son is dead. And the other says, no, but this son is the dead, and my son is the living. Mm -hmm. And the king said, bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. Mm -hmm. And the king said, divide the living child in two, and give half to the one, and the half to the other. Mm -hmm. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh my lord, give her the living child, mm -hmm. and in no wise slay it. Mm -hmm. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor yours, but divide it. Mm -hmm. And the king answered and said, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. All right? So he looked at it, he said, all right, in that case, you cut the baby in half, y'all split it. Right? So the mama whose baby died, she was like, yeah, that's right. Neither one of us get a baby. And the other one was like, no, forget it. She, Leave the baby alone and just let her have it. Solomon saw that, he was like, all right, well, it's clear what the baby did, right? He was a thinker. He put people in a position and was like, okay, you just tell on yourself, right? That's how wisdom works, right? Wisdom, you just ask the right questions, you know what I'm saying? Listen to the right story, and then be like, okay, pull something out there, and it's, it's, it's no way to around it. The truth, no matter what, it's going to come out, right? Sometimes it takes a little bit of time, all this stuff. Well, all you got to do is put all the right information out there with wisdom, and the truth going to come out. That thing going to become clear after a while. And you can just make a decision from there. That's how we all have to operate. We all have to operate with wisdom. We have to be able to see things before they happen. Otherwise, we just be in the same position of making the same mistakes, looking at things the same way, and then feeling the same terrible way after we do it. Just in there, oh, my God. I'm worthless. God don't love me. I'll never make it into the kingdom. This, that, and other. Because we know we all feel like, well, you do something, you ain't got no business to it. Just like, oh, my goodness, thing is the worst. Right? We got to get ourselves to a position where we can see all that. But okay, look, I know if this happened, this happened, this happened, I'm going to be weak in this area. And then from weak in that area, I'm going to do this. You know what? Let me just stay away from the whole situation. That's the type of thinking that Solomon had at first. Right? We don't see how that even, even wisdom could be turned against you. Watch it. What verse was that? 28? And all Israel heard the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him mm -hmm. to do judgment. That's it. That's it. That's it. Go, to, uh, sec go back to Second Chronicles. We left, we left off on 12. Uh, yeah. It's Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 12. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 12. Such a baby. It's little things, though, that I just know I never noticed it before. But notice, the women were doing what with their newborn baby? They're breastfeeding. 
but not just breastfeeding, but they're sleeping with them. Right? I like that thing. I always like try to think about like, you know what I'm saying, what was they doing? Cause you know, nowadays there's a lot of white folks, not even just white folks, there's our people too. You know what I'm saying? They, uh, uh, they be talking about us for, you know what I'm saying, letting the boys sleep with us. And I'll be thinking about that thing like, naturally that's how I was. Like naturally I was like, kid ain't gonna darn sleep with me. That's how I started off with like Zahar. You know, I think about it like, why not? Like, why not? Like, what is, you know what I'm saying? Why wouldn't the kid, you know what I'm saying, sleep? And so then, then people say, oh, well, you can roll over and kill the baby and all this stuff, or it creates dependencies and all that. I'm like, I know a lot of these spoiled little kids that slept in the crib their entire life, and they but it darn dependent. <laughs> so I'm just like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So I always try to, like, I try to, like, break tradition of just doing things of just because that's how it's been done. And like kind of think through it, like, all right, well, let's try something different. Let's see how it works. Let's see how it can play out. I need my space. I feel, I mean, I'm not saying that that's, that's how it has to be. I'm just saying, like, what's the reason? Like, for me, it's not a reason. I'm good. As long as, you know, I, can, I got a big bed, you know what I'm saying? They can have all that side of the bed, and y'all just wrestle. If she cool with it, I'm cool with it. That thing don't bother me. My wife, she can it. She said, he like, I'm quick. Yeah, but sometimes he can sleep in there every now and then. If she don't notice, he good. If she don't notice, but. Honestly, some some days, you know what I'm saying, on the weekends and stuff like that, yeah. we all in the bed. Yeah, when she go, and I like that thing, you know yeah, what I'm saying. I be like, I be looking at me, you know what I'm saying. I got both my boys in the bed and my wife. Yeah. That thing, I I like it. When she go, and I let them sleep with me. And it's time to do a little bit of wrestling. And it's like, all right, you know what I mean? Boy, boy y'all gonna get, get in the bed. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? About to do some WWF. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? You never really know. You know what I'm saying? Boy, gotta go get in that darn bed. We put that stuff. They always sleep in the bed when she. Get your butt in the darn bed. That's what I tell. But uh, Cali, I'll let him sleep with me. Yeah, I let uh, I let him sleep with me halfway through the night. I made him I made him go to sleep in their room, but then they came in. I ain't got no problem with them being in the bed sometimes. I just don't. What I don't like, I don't like where it's like it's not an option to sleep in your own bed. That's I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, that's why I made the hard start sleeping in his own bed because it's like in his mind it wasn't an option. I have to sleep here. Like, no, that's not. Give it to your, give it to your sister. You know what I'm saying? I need you to be able to operate in two different ways. Give it to your sister. Where we at? Second Chronicles, chapter. Give it to your sister. Come here, lady. You got a shot. <laughs> I did the worst. Eli, you better cut it out before I get it. Go. Stop! <laughs> Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, uh -huh. neither shall there any after thee have the like. Mm -hmm. And Solomon came from his journey to the high place that was at Gibeon in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm from before the tabernacle of the congregation and reigned over Israel. Mm -hmm. and Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen. He did what? Gathered chariots and horsemen. Mm. And he had a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, mm -hmm. which he placed in the chariots in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And the king made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenteous as stones mm -hmm. and cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance. So think about this. This is a different type of wealth. He said he made silver and gold as plenteous as what? Stones. So, I mean, you walk outside, we got all these rocks in the yard. I got a bunch of rocks in my yard. Right? Just imagine that what we see in our yard, I mean, that's nothing because we got enough gold to fill the yard. Like, I mean, that's how, that's how many, that's how much gold. He gathered that much gold from around the earth where it's just like, oh, well, you know what I'm saying? That's just a, that's just a rock. You know what I'm saying? That thing was nothing. That's how much. Like it didn't work. It wasn't worth nothing to them because it was so much of it. That's a different type of wealth. You know what I'm saying? That's a different type of wealth. That back when Hebrews ran the world. Yeah, I go have my friend. It was short lived, but for a while we ran the world. I go my friend yard and just pick up a stone and that silver and gold. That's crazy. Yeah, buddy. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what it's talking about. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt. And linen yards, 
the king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. Mm -hmm. And they fetched up and brought forth out of Egypt a chariot of 600 shekels of silver, mm -hmm. and the horse for 150, and so bought they, all, bought they out horses for all the kings of the Hittites and for the kings of Syria by their means. All right, so Solomon, he ended up getting a real liking for horses. What would you relate that to today? Cars. Cars, right? That's our people. Like, it's not like it ain't nothing different what you see. You know what I'm saying? What's his name? Uh, Birdman. Birdman, when he got on, you know what I'm saying? Back like, what, 93? Oh, like 99. Like 98. No. Yeah, 97, 98. Like, when they were really doing it. Like, you talking like famous, like rap famous? Or no, like I, think he, I think he got the, the deal, like, in 93. Uh, I want to say it was like 93. You know what I'm saying? Somewhere around there. You know what I'm saying? It was like early, though. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and he got his deal, and one of the first things he did is go buy a whole bunch of cars. Even to this day, like every time he get like something cracking, you know what I'm saying, like a new cracking deal, he go buy a whole bunch of cars. You know what I'm saying? All these rappers, all these famous people, right? They go buy a bunch of cars. Same thing that Solomon was doing. Solomon was like, you know what I'm saying, I got it. He started looking at these horses, like, all right, Egypt, what y'all got? All right, well, I'll trade you this, you know what I'm saying? Just bring all them hit up. The Hittites got. <coughs> Y'all got some nice horses over there. Let me, let me get this. So he just started multiplying a whole bunch of horses. Real quick before we get out of here, grab Deuteronomy chapter 17. Watch this. Watch out quickly. Your wisdom will get you a lot of stuff, and then you forget that wisdom when you have all the stuff. All right? This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 14. When you are coming to the land which the Lord your God gives you, and shall possess it, and shall dwell there, and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me, you shall in any wise set him king over you, mm -hmm. whom the Lord your God shall choose. One from among your brethren shall you set king over you. You may not set a stranger over you, which is not your brother. Mm -hmm. But he shall not multiply horses to himself. Don't he shall not do what? Multiply horses to himself. He said, don't you go out there and buy a whole bunch of cars now. That's crazy. That's crazy. Don't you go out there buying a whole bunch of horses. Not to yourself. All right? What else what can he do? Nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses. Mm-hmm. So what did he just where'd he just do? He got some horses from Egypt. He, he went right to Egypt was like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Let me uh let me get some horses. We can make this trade, you know what I'm saying? Just let me get a couple of them horses. You think people had to return to Egypt to get the horses for him? Yeah. I got that. For as much as the Lord had said, to you, had said to you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly Neither shall he multiply what? Wives to himself. Because what? That his heart turn not away. We're going to read about next week how he did exactly that. All right? So he knew the law. He understood the law. And in some ways, followed the law. But then, he gets to this dark place after he get all his wealth, get all the gold, you accomplish, you put out judgment, pops, start to take it a little easy. So you start to collect horses, all right? And then eventually, you start to collect darn wives, concubines and wives, and made a darn mess. And we'll talk about a little bit more of that next week. Yeah, like a thousand. Yeah, but that's crazy. Books say 800 wives and 300 concubines. I was the other way around. You know what I'm saying? See, I mean, 700. Yeah, I think it was 700. One way, 700 and 300. But, uh, that thing was a darn mess. I'll tell you that much. Any questions? That boy probably had like 100 kids. Yeah, he probably had plenty. You know what I'm saying? That thing, 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 you know what I'm saying? You ain't trying to have no kids. That's all they were doing. Back then, you know what I'm saying? It was the glory of our women. You know what I'm saying? Just having some kids. You know what I'm saying? That's what that thing was all about. You know what I'm saying? They just wanted to have some kids. That thing ain't going to be super sad. Like, no, I already got my two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got me some crap and You know what I'm saying? And stop, buck stop right there. I'm good. I'd have had a team. And they all would have been working for me. Go get them crops, boy. Go do this. Go do that. Go do that. I'd have been taking it easy. They would be efficient. Any questions? Let's pray out.